from VTV Channel 6 Studios in downtown Vernal, this is Local Point with your host, Chris Piner. Welcome to Local Point, brought to you by Strata Networks. I'm your host, Chris Piner. On today's show, we will meet the two candidates running for Vernal City Mayor. Now joining me in the studio is Alan Mashburn. Welcome. Well, Chris, thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I just want to know why we're doing this inside. It's a beautiful day out there, and we need to be out there. <laughs> you never know what day this is playing. It could be <laughs> rainy on the day that you're watching. Uh, but it'd be beautiful anyway, right? That's right. <laughs> That's the politician in you. <laughs> All right, well, let's start with an introduction. Go ahead and introduce yourself and a uh, little bit of why you've chosen to run for mayor. Okay. I'm Alan Mashburn, and um, I've been in Vernal for 30-plus years. I'm married to Kathy Price Mashburn. And uh, we've had a, a wonderful opportunity in this community to be involved in it. We've had four successful businesses. Uh, Kathy runs a Santa's community effort, and we have each of us been involved in a number of different activities, of different organizations uh, during our entire time that I've been here, and definitely during the lifetime of Kathy. Well, that sounds very good. Uh, it, what kind of experience do you have that qualifies you to be the mayor? Well, let's back up just a second there, and, and let me answer that, but go about it slightly differently. Chris, you and I have lived in this community a long time. We've seen the economy, and it has its ups, and it has its downs, and it has its sideways movements and everything else. And I know you've heard about the potential coming of uh, oil shale and oil sands and the continued exploration for oil and gas in the community. And from all the information I've heard, that's going to bring about 1,000 families into our community. Mm. I mean, that could be three, 4,000 additional people. That's going to be an increase to every part of our community. And, you know, we've got to be prepared. And I think that you're right. I think that I have the experience and qualifications to be able to handle that job. I think I'm uniquely qualified for it. I'll give you some examples. I've served on two state boards, one of which was the Board of Oil, Gas, and Mining. And I served as chairman of it for two years. I've also served on the Vernal City Council, and I'm the former mayor. And I've been a member of the Vernal Area Chamber of Commerce for a number of years and served on the Holidays Committee, the Dinosaur Roundup Rodeo, Santa's Community Effort, and sponsored a number of local activities. I, I'm, look, I'm a committed member of this community and very actively involved in it. The other thing I need to say is that energy still drives and is going to continue to drive this economy for a long time. I worked in the oil and gas industry for 32 years. I also have a business degree from a local campus here, USU. And I own a small business in downtown Vernal. Well, let's, uh, let's go right with uh, the future of Vernal. What is your vision for where we're headed? The future of Vernal. Well, I mentioned the fact that we're going to continue to grow. We see that coming. Um, I, I guess the thing that I really want to say is that Downtown Vernal used to be the heart of our community. Now it, it seems in some cases more like a stepchild. Over the past few years, we've lost a number of retail businesses down there. And right now the Oak House is having a closing sale. Home Entertainment Center is moving farther to the west. We have buildings vacant, and we have three large buildings for sale. And I don't know what's going to happen with the buildings that currently house Oak House and the Home Entertainment Center. They might become vacant also. I think it's going to be difficult to get additional retail into those two establishments. Now, Kathy and I own Bitter Creek Books and the Backdoor Grill. It's right in the heart of downtown Vernal. And we don't want to see that downtown die. We want to see it thrive and prosper. And that's my vision, to keep this thing going and alive. And, and I guess I'm a little concerned that the Vernal City Council doesn't want to address the issues uh, about our, our, our downtown core area. They had an opportunity a few years ago to put a parking lot in down there, and they chose not to do it. One council member told me that if the downtown merchants needed a parking lot and wanted one, they needed to do it themselves. This statement comes from a council that provided over $3 million in property and sales tax incentives to outside investors to build a shopping complex that actually requires that a large percentage of the retail space be only available to national chains. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong in new businesses. We need to encourage them. We need to bring them into our community. But I think that the businesses should compete on the same level 
as those that have been here for years and made this community what it is. Another problem I had is that the Furnace City Council recently had to make the decision to rezone a large area of land to allow high density, low income housing. After a lengthy discussion, the proposal was narr narrowly defeated by a three to two vote. The rezone was overwhelmingly opposed by other local residents. I mean, the decision by the council was correct. It should have been voted down. But the decision should have been five to zero, not three to two. We need to listen to our citizens and respond to their concerns. Well, thank you for coming today. Uh, this election also is going to be a little different. And, and we should say that we're, we're using the same question format for both both of the candidates today. That's why I haven't given any follow-up questions. But this is a different election. In the last couple of seconds, can you just uh, uh, tell our viewers how that's going to happen and why it'll be a little different? I'd love to. Just want to remind the voters out there that this year it's a mail-in ballot. You have all, you've already received your ballots through the mail. You need to fill them out and get them back to the Vernal City Office. They're self-addressed, stamped, just get them in there. If you don't do it, and if you show up on your polling place no Tuesday, November 5th, you're going to be really lonely out there. All right. That was exactly what I was looking for. Thank you, Alan. And uh, thank you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break from, uh, uh, and, and hear from our sponsor. Then we'll be back to hear a little bit from the other candidates. Strata Networks is proud to bring the first true 4G LTE network to the Uinta Basin. 4G LTE is the most powerful mobile broadband available anywhere in the world. With speeds up to 10 times faster than 3G, you can stay connected like never before. Video chat without delay. Stream HDTV or movies in an instant and download or upload in seconds. For details, visit us in Roosevelt or Vernal or call 622-5007. More speed, more power. 4G LTE, only from Strata Networks. Welcome back to Local Point. On today's show, we're meeting with the uh, mayoral candidates for Vernal City. We just had the opportunity to hear from candidate Alan Mashburn. In this segment, we're going to hear from Sonia Norton, the other candidate. Now, uh, Ms. Norton was unable to uh, meet our taping, so uh, we're going to cut right now to this pre-recorded message. My name is Sonia Norton. I was born in, here in Vernal to Lynn and Pauline Smewen. A lot of people don't know that because, of course, my last name is Norton. I love Vernal. I love living here, and I always enjoy coming back when I go away. I want to keep it a place that people want to come and they call home. I've always wanted to be involved. I've enjoyed my involvement on City Council, and I would like to continue that involvement as mayor. I see that we need to do a lot of planning. That seems to be the majority of what we do as a city is we try to plan for the seen as well as the unforeseen. Infrastructure, things that people just take for granted every day that we use and we just want it to be there. I want to make sure it's there for the people of Vernal, that we have the water that we need, the sanitary needs, the roads, those type of things. Um, I know we don't think about those a lot, but they are a vital part of our community and a vital part of the city and what we have to plan for. We have tried to plan for growth. We've tried to plan as well as we can. It's always hard to determine where the growth will be and what type of growth it will be. But I think that's a big issue that with my experience with real estate that I can hopefully help with that and try to do the best we can. We also try to gather as much information as we can so that we make the best decisions for the community. I know uh, many times we love to have the involvement of the community and hear their aspect. We don't know everything. We don't have all the information when we make the decisions. We have to do the best that we can and make the best decision based on the information we have. I know many times it's not the popular vote. It's not the thing that um, some of the people, especially if it's going to affect them directly, want. But it may be the best thing overall for the community. And that's what we are here for, is to look out for the community as a whole. 
doesn't mean we don't listen to those voices and try to do what we can to mitigate any impacts to them, but we do have to look at what's best for the community. Um, I know that we've had issues in the past with growth, with higher density, things like that, especially affordable housing. Um, that's brought up a lot in our community and people say, well, what's affordable housing? I think affordable housing is something that when people come here to work, they can afford to live here. That we have places, if you want to live in a nice home, we have those. And if you can't afford a nice home and just need a nice place, but at a lower rate, you can find that also. We want them to be clean, we want them to be nice, um, be positive things for our community. And I think when we can be involved in that process, it helps. A lot of times private development is able to come in and do what they feel is best for them. But whenever the city can be involved, especially when um, they need to do an, a development type agreement because they're wanting to change the zoning or alter the general plan to, ma to make it work. If we feel like that's in the best interest of the community, we will work with them, but we will also try to put things in place that will try to, like I said, mitigate those impacts to the residents that are nearby and involved. I know another thing I would really like to do is I've always loved the outdoors. I think a lot of people that live here do. And I would like to work with the county and with Naples City to try to do a, some kind of a trail system throughout our community that would be beneficial for the health and well-being of all the members in our community. I like to road bike, but I'm scared to ride on our roads. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of bike lanes and it is a little scary. So I want to give people the opportunity to walk the byways, the backways of our community, see the beautiful scenery we have here, the creeks, the canals, and interact with others and feel comfortable doing that. And I hope we can work on something like that. I'm also very interested in hearing from the community. I want to know their concerns. And many times we hear their concerns when they're angry and frustrated. And I'm hoping that we can get out more information to the public, be more forthright with what we're doing. Not that we've been secret in the past, but just give them a little bit more information so that they can be more involved, ask questions before they get angry and frustrated, find out answers from the source. Um, many times in our community we tend to get we hear things, and not that they were meant to be twisted, but sometimes they just don't get transferred on correctly. And that can be part of the misunderstanding and problems we have. I'm hoping to help alleviate that by getting more information out to the public and encouraging them to ask questions. Um, if they don't want to interact with us, we're hoping to get more technology-based information out through the website, um, a blog, possibly things like that where they can voice their concerns and not feel like they have to come to the city office or make a phone call to a city official, but that they can do it when they have time and feel more comfortable doing that. Um, I really enjoy what I do. I would like to continue doing it as mayor and representing Vernal. I'm involved in many um, boards and things at a state level that help me see things that are going on around the state. And I think that also helps our perspective. It's always good to see what others are doing and learn from their mistakes, so hopefully we don't make the same mistakes. We'd like to thank both of the candidates for the time they've given us today and remind all of our viewers within Vernal City Limits that uh, this is not a traditional polling place election. It's all done through the mail. So check the mail. If you have any other questions, check with the Vernal City offices. Thank you for watching today's show. That's all for now. Please join us next time right here on VTV Channel 6.